Good afternoon. Bonjour. Mata, mata Urazaro. Uh, I'm Paul Stoller, and I am a professor of anthropology at Westchester University in Pennsylvania in the United States. It's my great pleasure to be invited to this special event uh, honoring the legacy of Jean Rouche, who passed away roughly 10 years ago. Uh, I first met Jean Rouche in 1976 uh, in the uh, hallway of the Institut de Recherche en Sciences Humaines of the University of Niamey. Since that time in 1976, we maintained contact, uh, became um, uh, close uh, associates, and he had a profound influence on my own approach uh, to anthropology. Five years ago, um, I uh, came to Niamey uh, uh, around the fifth anniversary of, uh, of his death in, in 2004, when I got news that he had died in a car accident um, in Niger, I was very, very saddened. The world had lost uh, a great pioneer in visual anthropology and documentary cinema. Uh, and I wanted to, uh, to, to retrace uh, some of my steps in Niger and come back to Niger um, roughly around the time of uh, the fifth year anniversary of his passing. And so I did. And when I came back to uh, Niamey five years ago, I I went to places that Rouge had showed me uh, early on in our relationship in the 1970s and the 1980s. So uh, one of the first places I went to was the, was the street that he had constructed as a civil engineer in the 1940s that led from the, uh, the Niger River to the Grand Hotel. I also went to, to look at and uh, hang out at uh, the Hotel Terminus, which Rouge uh, had informed me was supposedly the end point for uh, the, the great railroad that was going to connect the Dakar and the MA, which of course was never completed. But the, term, the, the, the terminal point was where, the, where is uh, the, the Hotel Terminus is situated. Finally, I went to a place in the MA called Dongo Tundi, uh, Dongo's Rock. And Dongo Tundi is a spot uh, where in the past uh, uh, spirit possession ceremonies honoring the, the great spirit of the Songhai Dongo, the spirit of thunder, uh, were celebrated uh, during uh, one of the main uh, spirit possession ceremonies called the Yenandi, or the cooling off ceremony, uh, a ceremony that is performed to bring on the rains and the planting season. And so uh, I went to Dongo Tandi, and, and for each time that I, um, each time that I uh, went to these places, uh, it reminded me so much about my, uh, what my teacher, my mentor, Jean Rouche, uh, stood for and, and, and what was important about his work. And so I'd like to uh, spend a, a little bit of time in this uh, presentation uh, talking about uh, the impact of Jean Rouche's work uh, for uh, anthropology, for visual studies, uh, and, and, and for the for the ethnography of uh, Songhai people uh, and, and other peoples in uh, the Republic of Niger. So one of the things that uh, Jean Rouche's example, uh, which is underscored in his films, uh, one of the things that meant a great deal to me was the profound respect that he showed for the people that he was attempting to film and to represent. He had a profound respect for the traditions of the, of the Songhai people, for their rituals and how uh, they were performed. And I think that this respect gets, um, gets characterized very, very uh, uh, tactily and profoundly uh, in his films, especially his films on spirit possession, where we not only see the sequences of events that lead up to uh, incidents of spirit possession, but we, we get to know the, the people uh, who are mediums and uh, uh, praise singers and musicians. And uh, they are portrayed in a way that is uh, uh, really quite extraordinary in the sense that it, you get, as a viewer, you get a sense of their great pride, their great honor, and the burden of their responsibility as uh, participants in spirit possession. Uh, the consequences of which, of course, have real-world consequences for, um, uh, for life in the Sahel, bringing rain, 
uh, dealing with uh, illness and sick, sickness, dealing with uh, you know, jealousy, dealing with uh, issues of, um, uh, issues of uh, you know, unhappiness uh, and things of that nature. And so you get a real sense of that profound responsibility that members of Spirit Possession Troop uh, engaged in uh, through, the, through the prism of Jean Roche's films. So respect is really one of the, the hallmarks of his cinematic uh, work and also it is something that um, uh, you know, sort of said an awful lot to me as an anthropologist that, um, uh, that if following his example uh, in my own work and the work of other people who have been influenced by uh, Jean Rouche, um, that we try to produce works that uh, underscore the, our respect for the traditions of the people uh, that we are trying to understand and trying to, um, and, and, and trying to uh, represent. So respect is one thing. The second thing that Jean Rouche's uh, work uh, taught me and many, many other anthropologists both in France and in the United States and throughout the world really, is uh, a sense of the future. Uh, his work in film uh, underscores the, the, the profound importance that he placed and many, many uh, traditional African peoples placed on uh, the future. And for him, I think he tried to produce films on spirit possession, on, uh, on sorcery, on uh, the various other aspects of cultural life among the Songhai people as well as the Dogon of Mali. Uh, that uh, that would, um, as one of my one of my one of my teachers put it, uh, produce a work that will remain open to the world. That is to say, a, a film that, even though it may have been shot 50 years ago, uh, still has re relevance uh, today for people who who view it today. And so, if you can say that you produced a film, as did Jean Rouge for many many of his films, that. Uh, is still being discussed many, many years after uh, it was made, still having an impact on people's lives, then that is a true test of uh, greatness as far as I'm concerned. And at this, uh, you know, this sort of festival honoring the legacy of Jean Rouchap ten years after he's, he died, um, the projections of the films that, uh, the projections of the films that have been scheduled uh, really do uh, sort of reinforce uh, the notion that his films are uh, still relevant and that his films are films that trigger uh, important discussions and important revelations. Uh, Rouch once uh, told me, he said, well, you know, um, it's important uh, to produce films that um, honor the past and enable the people of the present to uh, rediscover their past. And, um, and so, uh, his films uh, sort of meet this really, really very important criteria uh, for remaining open to the world. So, um, in, in essence, what Jean Rouch's films and his ethnography in general uh, mean to me is, is that they, they really do uh, speak to some of the profound issues of the human condition. Uh, through his intensive uh, and uh, his intensive um, uh, characterization of people in his films, uh, Rouch uh, uh, approached uh, fundamental issues about the human condition that, um, uh, that have a kind of transcendent quality. And so his films speak to such issues as uh, love and hate, fidelity and uh, betrayal, um, courage and fear. Uh, and these are the real uh, foundations of what we call the human condition. And therefore, Jean Rouch's films, uh, you know, in, a, in large measure, um, uh, underscore those kinds of uh, themes, and that gives his films and his legacy uh, a staying power that, um, that will, you know, will guarantee that his work and his ideas and his consciousness uh, will uh, remain uh, with us for many, many years to come, having an impact not just on the people today, but for uh, the generations of the future. Thank you so much for your time, and I look forward to the 
um, roundtable discussion that we will have um, you know, this afternoon. Thank you again for inviting me to participate. Thank you.